everybody welcome to the video surprise of the day today's video surprise is on the blue driver diagnostic obd2 scanner tool so i'm talking about the pros and cons in this review before you get started please remember to hit the subscribe button the bell icon will be notified new videos and i really appreciate that thumbs up thank you very much in advance hey first of all i want to tell you a little bit what's blue driver so it's a pro scanner tool, it's an OBD2 scanner tool. So there's some requirements for this over here. And these work for American, North America, Europe, and other locations as well. And you can see bluedriver.com. So I purchased this one from Amazon. I'll post a link in, in the description below if you're interested in getting one. And I actually had a number of these in the past, but I sold it. Now, in order to get the application for the Blue Driver, you need to go to the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. So it works on your smartphone or tablet. And there's a blue LED lights up when the connection is made. And there's also a phone number and custom support number if you need more help on how to use the blue driver. Uh, notice there's not all the connectors in the back are available. So it just uses a few of these and just a dongle. It's just a, no more than a US, uh, Bluetooth OBD2 dongle that goes underneath your vehicle in the OBD2 port of the vehicle and I have this for a long time this particular one and it's very simple to use so what you need to do is just open the, the door of your vehicle locate where the OBD2 port is under your vehicle in this case it's right under here if you can see it over there it's a gray one over here and it only goes in one way because the other way doesn't go in so just keep that in mind once you find the, the tool and take it out of the box, and you just need to plug it in. So you can see that I'm trying to get out to plug it in right here. And sorry about the sunlight. And it plugs in. So yes, it's upside down. But you see the blue LED and that's the orientation of the OBD2 port of the vehicle. This is on the most internal combustion engine vehicles, and keep that in mind. So if you have a Tesla, uh, you're out of luck. It doesn't have this tool over here in particular to use. So once you have that on, you can power on your vehicle. So next, you need to start the app on the device. I have an Apple iPhone, so I have an app up already. I'm going to do a scan on the check engine light, for example, right? Or just do a check engine light scan or something. It will tell you what's wrong with your vehicle. And it doesn't take that long to do that. So, you know, that one's the most simple. It does ask you how many miles your vehicle has. And you probably want to enter that if you like to keep track. In my case, I'll just enter it right here. So, and just type in the miles. Uh, the thing is that it doesn't have a flashing cursor or anything that in particular. And you can actually clear if you like. There's an option to do that. You just hit the clear, the garbage can over there, right? And if you want to do other scans, you can as well too. So no more issues or things. Zero shows up over here. I do want to go back and do a scan for the all system module. And this one's going to take a while. So I'm going to see if I could fast forward this quite a bit. Module scan took about maybe say uh, eight, 10 minutes or so. And I skip ahead by way too. So otherwise it'd be a, you know, a long time waiting in this particular vehicle. So the module scans work fine. And it does also ask you for the mileage again. You know, it's the same. So there's nothing found. We had an issue with the module and this vehicle in particular. And you actually could clear the code if you really want to. You know, I'm not going to clear it. I just want to show you that. So other thing you could scan is the trouble code or common dash lights and such. And you probably could run that on this particular one. And keep in mind, the engine one is the fastest to scan. The module one is the slowest to scan for this tool. You always keep track of your mileage and just have it saved at the end. So, you know, you don't lose track. And there are other things you could do on this uh, particular app uh, besides clear code and do a scanning. So there are a lot of different uh, settings that you could look at. You also have save reports, freeze frame, smog check. You know, those, those are other things that would be useful, right? The smog check. For example, you want to check it before you go do smog so you don't waste your money doing smog and you'll fail, right? So this app is really good. It works for all vehicles, Hondas, Lexus, Toyotas. You know, it's not like some of the apps out there that only work for specific ones. And, you know, your uh, check engine light is off, right? 
and it'll give you information if you had it on and it goes off or something like that. It gives you a detailed report on this one in particular. There's also mileage status, you know, and also service, uh, vehicle info. You know, you also have like say the service you want to look at. Oil reset, we need to let the oil reset over here, right? And it tells you how to do that. And a TPMS, tire pressure monitoring system, right? And when you do reset, how to do it. And you know, you also could put the battery registration and such, right? There's nine different categories to choose from in the blue driver menu. And I leave the freeze frame and most six to the people that are more experienced in mechanics of the vehicle or technicians to use. Okay, pros and cons. These are my opinions only, by the way, and yours may differ. Uh, the tool is really a great tool, in my opinion, because it's simple to use. And you don't have to pay for anything in particular. You just buy the tool for 99 bucks or so. You own it. And the user interface is very informative. And all, not only that, it gives you suggested fixes of an issue. It will pinpoint the issue and works on most of the vehicles, no matter if it's American, Japanese, German, etc. And frequent reported fixes are good to know, so it gives you an idea of what's wrong with your vehicle, and you can price it out before you bring it to mechanics so you don't get whipped off. And at the same time, the mechanic won't whip you off because you know what you have. Otherwise, you know, you don't know what you have on your vehicle, and you bring it to mechanic, you get whipped off. So here's the con part about this tool. It doesn't follow the EOM standard, like some of the other tools, the OBD2 scanners, what other ones out there, say Parista or VP. Those you actually could buy uh, in-store purchase apps and stuff uh, to upgrade and change a setting, right? Or you could tune your BMW or change a setting for your, say, your Hondas. You want your power windows to roll down when you're holding a key fob switch, for example, right? It doesn't work with this one in particular. So this one is very centered on diagnostic. So the only thing really, really good on this tool is diagnostic and works through my Honda. Gives you a lot of details and information, whereas Carista I had before, it doesn't give you that in-depth detail. So you know, so that's something to note. When you finish, turn off your vehicle and just pull it out like this. And then you can save it for next time. So that that's simple to use tool. And it's 99 bucks, definitely worth it. And you don't always have to call a mechanic or spend big money for that. In ending, I think the Blue Driver 2 is a really great tool to look at and purchase, especially for a diagnostic. If you buy it to customize, definitely look elsewhere. Look at VP, look at uh, Carista, and even other apps out there. So it may be better for customization. You made it this far, please help me out with a thumbs up so that people could see the video. If you have a comment, please leave it below and I try to answer it or to help others out as well. Have a good one. Thanks a lot. Bye.